Hi there guys, this is Teacher Harry here and welcome back to my English lessons where we try to help you to get a better understanding of the use of the English language. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, before we get on to the topic for today, let me just remind you that you can listen to my podcast. Lots of things to help you, lots of useful information to help you with the English language. And at the end of this particular lesson, I'll give you my contact details. So what is it about today? Well, in today's lesson we're going to talk about online meetings and in particular must have phrases for online meetings. The whole world has changed upside down as you know in the last two years and lot of, lots and lots of people are now working remotely and lessons like the lessons that I give are all remote or online. So when people are having their online meetings using Zoom or Skype or Google Meets or Microsoft Teams, whatever it is, they're these are all online meetings that they're having day to day, week in, week out. And sometimes non-native speakers have difficulty, not with the business language, but some of the small talk or the chit chat or the introductory phrases that you should use when you want to introduce a topic or raise a topic or have a question, whatever it might be. So this particular lesson is going to focus on, as I say, the must have phrases and, and expressions for online meetings. And we're going to break it down into different parts, okay? So the first part we're going to look at is the start of the meeting, the beginning of the meeting. So what I'm going to give you now are just specific key phrases that you can use. Some of them may be quite obvious, some of them you might be using already, but they are very simple and I always emphasize the simplicity of the language that we want to use. In this way, nobody can misunderstand what you want to say. You'll remember it a lot easier if it's simple, okay, and it's easy to use. So let me give them to you. So the, if you're in charge of the meeting, well, you'll just start by welcoming everyone. Welcome everyone. Today's meeting is about, okay? So you just tell them it's a sales meeting, it's a marketing meeting, it's a particular client complaint issue, it's a budget, whatever it might be. Welcome everyone, welcome to today's meeting. These are the issues that we want to talk about. You know, this is our agenda, or I sent you the agenda before the meeting, so you should all have a copy of what's on it. If you want to say something, then just interrupt as we go through this particular meeting. So starts off with, welcome everyone. The purpose of today's meeting is to, the purpose of today's meeting is to complete the budget process or to sign off on the budgets or to agree the marketing strategy for the launch of our new product. Okay, so introduce the topic and what it's going to be about. And perhaps you might even tell the people how long the meeting is going to take. You might just say, well, today's meeting is to discuss that the marketing, the launch of the new product, the meeting is going to last no more than one hour. So we're going to start at two and we're going to finish at three o'clock. So everybody will be out of here by three o'clock. So remember to look into the camera of your particular screen so that people can see you and you're engaging with them as I'm hopefully doing with you now. So welcome everyone, welcome to our Zoom meeting. The purpose of today's meeting is to discuss the important launch of our new product, which is going to start from the 1st of November. The meeting today is going to last no more than an hour, so hopefully I'll have you out of this meeting and offline by uh, no later than 10 minutes after three o'clock. Okay, simple, easy, easy to understand. Or you can start in another way. Thanks everyone for attending. It's really good to talk to you. It's really good to see you. Uh, today's meeting is blah, blah, blah. Okay, so just another way to introduce it. Or if you want to get straight to the point, so people attend, you you, you log them into the, the meeting, you accept them into the meeting. So when you look around the screen, it looks like you've got everybody. You can just simply say, okay, are we good to go? Meaning, is everybody uh, present or is everybody ready to start? So are we good to go? Meaning, are we good to get started? Or simply, okay, let's get started, shall we? Hmm? So it's a nice way to introduce it. Let's get started, shall we? I think everybody is here. Anybody else who's late, they can join in as we go along. Or in a little bit more informal way, okay, let's 
get this meeting started or let's kick off the meeting with. Okay, so let's kick off the meeting with a brief rundown of the last meeting. So you might have a summary of what was agreed so that everybody knows the starting position. So let's kick off the meeting now. We don't want to hold anybody up. We have to finish by three o'clock. So it's good if we can get the meeting started straight away. And in keeping with that sort of football type theme, and let's, let's kick off the meeting, we can also say, let's get the ball rolling with. Okay, a ball rolling, when the ball rolls, it means something has started. Because when the football game starts, one player kicks the ball to another player, and that's the first movement in the game. So when we talk about a meeting and we're using that sort of metaphor in relation to football, let's get the ball rolling, let's get the meeting started. Okay, so let's get the meeting started or let's get the ball rolling with a rundown of today's agenda. So you go down quickly, the three or the four or the five points you want to cover, and then you go back and you start with point one. Or we can be very, very specific and say, okay, today we're going to get started with. So you introduce the first point immediately. Today we're going to get started with budgets. Today we're going to get started with the annual report. Today, we're going to get started with that complaint we had that we didn't really satisfy the customer last week. Whatever it happens to be, very specific, and you tell the people exactly what, how, and when you're going to start that particular meeting. When we have online meetings, we're interfacing with the customer or interfacing with our colleagues or we're interfacing with the client through our camera and online on the screen. So sometimes it can be a good idea just to tell the person what you're doing. So when I'm starting a lesson, I often say to the student, okay, can I I'll share my screen with you? So I might say that because I've got a book or some exercises or some work that I want to share with you, the student. So I just simply say, okay, I'm going to share my screen with you now. Is that okay? So you get their permission to do it. So if you've got a bigger meeting with six or seven or ten people, then you're going to tell them, right, you're, you're, you're going to see my screen and on the screen you're going to see the agenda or the minutes of the meeting, whatever it might be. So you give them advanced notice of what's going to appear on the screen. And then you ask them, can you see my screen? Can you see it clearly? Can you see what I'm showing you? Do you want me to make it bigger? Yeah, so you might have to enlarge it because the print size might be a little bit small for some people to, to read if they're not accessing it through a laptop or a big screen. I'm going to put up my presentation now. Okay, so that's the next step. So they can see your screen. And when you click on, the next thing they'll see is the presentation. So it might be a it might be a PDF document, it might be a PowerPoint presentation, it might be some other way that you have to, to put the presentation together, or it might simply just be a Word document. So whatever it is, you're just going to give them advance notice as to what they're going to see on the screen. So by doing that, they know what to expect. So in case they cannot see it, they can say, well, sorry, I don't see it, or I don't see it yet, or there's something wrong, or the screen is blank, or whatever, yeah? So the screen is frozen, for example. So they can come back to you and tell you their experiences from their side of the screen. So can you see my screen? And when doing that, you say, I'm going to share my screen with you now. I'm going to share my document with you now. I'm going to put up the presentation. I'm going to share the PowerPoint presentation. If you've got any comments, you can put them in the chat line, uh, wherever or whatever way you have of dealing with Q and A's, questions and answers. Okay, so let's move on to the next part. Often when we have online presentations or meetings, there can be more than one or two people there. So if there are quite a number of people, you've really got to control it quite well. And in some cases, people might want to ask questions. In other cases, you might want people to speak up a little bit or you want them to be more emphatic. So you've got to give certain signals. So these next expressions and phrases will be for those particular situations. Could you speak more slowly, please? So if somebody's blah, 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 and I often get requested by people to slow down a little bit. So could you speak more slowly so that everybody can understand? Because if it's an international call and you've got some colleagues that are sitting in India or Italy or 
Poland or Portugal, no matter where they are, they may be all using English, but they may have different levels of English, and therefore it's better if you can speak more slowly so that everybody gets an opportunity to understand exactly what you're saying. Okay, so could you speak more slowly, please? Like a nice polite request. Could you explain that again, or could you go through that again? Because I didn't quite understand it. Could you repeat the last bit? meaning the last few sentences or the last slide. Could you repeat that last bit again? I wasn't quite sure. Perhaps you could give me another example. Could you speak up, please? I didn't quite hear it. So if you've got a question to ask or a comment to make or some observation, sorry, could you just speak up a little bit, please? Yeah, okay, I got that. Yeah, great, Th thanks. Let me take that, let me answer that. I didn't quite get that. Could you repeat it? I didn't quite get it or didn't understand quite what you meant. Perhaps you could go through that again. Okay, so just polite ways to ask people to repeat something, to speak up, to speak more slowly, to explain it in more detail, to go through some final points or the last bit that you covered so that everybody could understand. Okay, or somebody might say, well, look, my, my picture froze for a minute and I just missed the last bit you said. Could you repeat it, please? I'm sorry to have to ask. So you repeat the, the point again. And of course, when we're doing online meetings, there's always the potential or opportunity or desire for somebody to interrupt. We might want to interrupt what somebody is saying. They might want to interrupt us with a question, an observation. So there are certain expressions and phrases uh, that you should use and you must have when you want to make those interruptions. So let me go through those. Simple one is, sorry, would you mind if I asked a question? And of course, the person hosting the meeting can say, well, could you leave it to the end? Or why? Sure, just put it into the chat line. Or yeah, give me a question now. And perhaps it's a question that other people want to ask as well. So there's a different way to deal with it. Or if you want some clarification, or just to clarify what you're saying, is this what you meant? So you repeat in your words what you thought the point was and the person hosting the meeting will either agree or disagree or give a further explanation. So you can say, just to clarify what you're saying is, yeah, so you, you ask it in that way. Or could I interrupt you for a minute? So you want the opportunity to make a point, to ask a question, to clarify something. Could I interrupt you for a minute? Or could I interrupt you for a minute, please? Or would you mind if I interrupted you for a minute? So either of those will be absolutely acceptable. So another more informal way would be, would you mind if I jumped in here because I've got something to say, I've got a point to make, or uh, would you mind if I butted in? This is more American English. so jump in and butt in mean exactly the same as would you mind if I interrupted? So if you, would you mind if I interrupted? Much more formal. Would you mind if I jumped in here or butted in here? Much more informal. So, you know, I've got a, something to say. Could I butt in, please? Or if I could jump in there because, you know, this point is very relevant, it's very important. It cuts across something that I'm doing. So you, you lay out the reasons why you feel it necessary to jump in, why you feel it necessary to butt in or uh, interrupt with some particular point. Or can I stop you there quickly for just a minute? Yeah. So again, you're asking the speaker if he could just halt while you make a point or if he could just stop while you add something or ask a question or enlarge on something that he has already said. So can I stop you there quickly? Can I stop you for a minute? Yeah. So again, it's very polite and it's very acceptable. Or hold on a minute, please, just for a minute. We don't seem to have discussed that in, in much detail. Could we go back over it? Because I'm, I've got some questions. I'm sure other people have some questions as well. And in that way, you involve the other people in the meeting who might agree with you, who want this explained in a different way. So different ways in which you can interrupt and the expressions, the phrases, the must-have words that you should use for your online meetings. Of course, as we're online, then we've got the problems that everybody has with either sound, picture, interruption of connection, freezing, or lagging, all of these sort of problems. So there are certain words, expressions that you need to have when this happens. I'm having problems hearing you. 
So you don't get the sound or somebody hasn't uh, unmuted themselves or they haven't switched on their, their video. Do you, would you mind switching on your video? Would you mind uh, unmuting? Would you, you know, speak up or there seems to be something with your headsets? All of those can be problems visual or with the, the listening and hearing. Finally, there might be sometimes an echo, yeah, a little bit of a, you get the sound coming back to you, you hear yourself. So that might be something to do with somebody's headset or headphones or whatever way, way it may be. So you're trying to just explain to somebody the different type of interruptions you get. So just be very clear what they are. So your picture's frozen, there's an echo, I can't see the picture, I don't hear you so clearly, or oh, my, my connection has, has broken, all, all of those type of things. Okay, so let's move on then. So if we want to actually talk about moving on in the uh, meeting, so we can say, well, look, let's move on to the next point. So you want the people clearly on the screens to know that you've finished with point one or point two and you're moving on. So somebody's had a question, somebody's asked something, somebody's added something else. So you say, okay, let's move on or it's time to, to move on. So let's move on to the next item or moving on, let's talk about this or let's talk about that. So use those again, those exact words, moving on, or sometimes you say moving on swiftly. Okay, guys, there's a bit of a, a, a time issue here. So I think we should move on. And if you've got any other points about this, come back to me later or come back to me offline. Let's pencil in another meeting for next Wednesday. So you might run out of time. So you would say, okay, let's pencil in, mean let's write into our diaries or make a, a diary entry or somebody will send around an invitation electronically that will have another meeting to pick up on these points next Wednesday, same time. Okay. So when we want to summarize, because often when uh, we have a, a lengthy meeting, there are lots of points that have been made and it's no harm from time to time during the uh, meeting to summarize what have we done so far, what have we covered so far, or at the very end of the meeting, you really want to summarize the key points that have been made, the action points that you have, and more importantly, who's going to take responsibility for each of those individual action points. So here's some of the phrases that you might need. In summary, we're going to do this, or let me summarize by saying this. This is what I think we've agreed on. I think we can leave it here for today. I think we've, we've done enough. I think this is a good place to stop or to end. We can pick up again the next day, but we've covered m most of the key points that we wanted to cover. Thank you very much. We can pick up this again tomorrow and uh, I've made a note. I'll send you an email and we'll, we'll start again at the same time and go through the remaining points. So all very clear, very specific, so people know exactly what you've done. You've got your agenda. So, okay, we've, we've finished point three, we'll pick up from point four from tomorrow or we've finished the agenda. If anybody's got anything else to add, you can either ask it now, we've got a few minutes left, or get to me uh, offline through email and make sure you include or CC everybody else so everybody's kept up to date. Okay, so ways in which we can summarize. Okay, so it's really important when we're talking about online meetings that we do summarize. It's important that everybody knows where they are, particularly if you've got a lot of people that are uh, participating, if they're coming from many different countries, it's really important they know where you started, where you ended, what happened, is it the end of the meeting, is it going to continue another time, particularly if they've got a, a job to do, what are you asking them to do, what has been agreed, so that everybody knows what will happen next. Okay, so online meetings, online expressions, really good to know the language that you can use. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. As I said before, if you want to contact me, then you can do so on www.englishlessonviaskype.com. I'm really happy to hear from you anytime with some suggestions that you might have. These words that we use today, I'm sure they'll be of use to you, particularly in the modern world when lots and lots of meetings have moved online to Zoom and every, everything else. 
And of course, if you want lessons on a one-to-one -one basis or for family members or friends or colleagues, it won't always be me that will be giving the lessons, but we'd be delighted to hear from you. 